Hello and welcome to Mark chapter 7. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. Uh, as it always is absolutely fantastic to go through a scripture and wrestle with it, even though there was so much packed in and we can only draw a little bit out from each chapter, but I'm hoping you are getting something from it. I'm somewhere slightly different today. I'm in my office, but it's great to be here. So uh, let's get started without further ado and let's delve into some scriptures to today and find something that we can use to uh, for us for the rest of this day in Jesus name. Let's go. So Mark chapter seven opens up with Jesus and his uh, interaction with some teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem together to listen to what he had to say. Now, it's very interesting, actually, because if you go back into Mark chapter three, you realize that other people had gathered to come and see what Jesus had to say. Now, is it right? Yes, I would say it is. Yeah, it was, it's not it's not uncommon. It wasn't un, unthought of to come and see what Jesus had to say. Perhaps he was a false teacher. They had to kind of see what he was before they could move on. But we know from chapter three that their reaction towards Jesus was one of condemnation and the one of judgment and one that they wanted to have him arrested and killed. So then they, we know that when we read this in chapter seven, that they come with these preconception of ideas that they want to nail Jesus figuratively as well as actually real. They want to put him to the test, but they also have this idea in their minds that this is not what we want. This person goes against us and our beliefs. So we read at the beginning of it, the Pharisees, some of the teachers of the law who came from Jesus, gathered around Jesus. And they saw some of his disciples eating food with their hands that were defiled, that is, and washed. The Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they had their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And they observe many other traditions, such as washing of cups, pitchers and kettles. The religious leaders at this particular point in time had actually made this tradition so much of a priority that it actually came to the level of scripture or higher than scripture. Was Jesus demanded by the law to actually wash his hands? No. We go back in the Old Testament and we can see that there was a put in place that the uh, priests were to wash their hands, but actually not for everyone else. And we see that the, the religious leaders at that time had taken this one step further to say that every Jew must go through this ritual of tradition of washing their hands before they can eat. And it is tradition that took over their focus of the Pharisees. And tradition is kind of the main focus, I guess we will focus on ourselves on today. That when tradition supersedes scripture or what God has been saying in through his words, that is when we come into trouble. And all too often we can come across this in our own types of tradition. And we carry on from verse five, it says this. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law asked Jesus, why don't your disciples live according to the tradition of the elders instead of eating their food with defiled hands? He replied, that's Jesus. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you hypocrites, as it is written, These people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Wow. So here is the religious leaders questioning Jesus' authority, questioning what his disciples were doing. And Jesus is saying, are you bunch of hypocrites, do you not know that you're putting your traditions above the word of God above scripture. And he then goes on, as we say, to call them, not only just call them hypocrites, he says this thing, with their lips, the people honour me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And sometimes I just want to say that for us today. Sometimes we honour God with our lips, but it is our hearts that God is most entwined and God is most interested in. God is interested in our lips and what we speak, but most of all, it's the intentions and motivations of the heart that is most important. And sometimes, just sometimes, our traditions can go too much. Now, tradition is quite an interesting word, isn't it? I don't personally feel like tradition is a bad word, or you could, but many people do. They can see it as a taboo word. There are good traditions and there are bad traditions. But all too often, and sometimes it's easy to make traditions our main focus, especially in church life. Now, I'm not speaking of, of our church DCC. I don't know who might be listening to this this, this morning. 
that sometimes we can make our traditions a main focus rather than what God is putting on our minds and what God's intentions for church is. It could be uh, the style of the worship. We're used to this particular style of worship. Maybe that's, our, maybe that's our tradition. It could be the type of sermon that someone brings. It could be the type of clothes that someone brings and wears into church. And sometimes we look at people and we, and we look at church services or maybe it's the structure of a church service and our traditions just overtake our thoughts and our emotions. And you know what? Traditions can in some ways kill an utter unity within the church. Because what they do is they cause division and people will think I think people will pit someone's traditions against their own. And almost a uh, person's tradition almost becomes as important to them as their idea of what Christianity is. And rather than being excited that some people are coming into church or excited that worship is is blaring from the stents and from the stage we become judgmental all this type of worship isn't what i'm used to and jesus says here quite clearly that we are to honor god with our lips yes but we have a warning as he says here that people honor with their lips but they don't honor them with their hearts as their hearts are far from him we want our hearts to be close to jesus and we want to ensure that our traditions yes as important as they may be don't overtake scripture they don't overtake our love and our passion for Christ and our passion for his church. So that is our message this morning for you today. Whatever your traditions are, whatever your preferences may be for church, may they not be so much so that they overshadow what church is actually all about, about uniting and bringing us together as body of believers to worship God. So let us rejoice when the music is not to our tasting or the songs aren't to our tasting. Or let us rejoice when the sermons aren't quite like that. Because you know what? They are reaching somebody out there. And that is the main thing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your message. We thank you, Lord, that yes, traditions are important to us. And we have many traditions in our lives as Christians. But you know what, well, God? We don't want to put them before you. We want to put you at the top of our list always. And when things happen, Lord, we want to rejoice because we say, you know what, this may not be my tradition, but I know you are reaching to somebody. And I am absolutely thrilled that this particular person has come to church and come to know you. It is not about us, but it's about you. May we worship you with our lips, but most of all, would we worship and honour you with our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen.